Ljudteknikern Chris Watson är känd för sitt arbete tillsammans med David Attenborough. Han är specialiserad på att spela in ljudet av djur, deras hemvist och andra miljöer över hela världen. We live clearly in modern times and that means we are bombarded by sound and noise day and night and our senses are detuned to the effect that we filter out so much information simply to concentrate on whatever we're doing at the time and to avoid distraction as we're bombarded particularly with noise music commercials aircraft noise road traffic conversations mobile phones computers so we hear everything but we rarely have the chance to listen to any particular individual thing when you do that you become much more aware of our general sonic environment and how contaminated it is with noise and to a certain extent that's what drives me to a lot of remote places but coming to a habitat like this a beach is a perfect opportunity because there's a whole range of sounds and a whole range of frequencies and dynamics condensed into a relatively small range from within a couple of hundred meters of the car park down to the beach and then out in and beneath the ocean. That's one of the things I find really exciting and satisfying about recordings is to be able to come to locations like this and draw out individual sounds at very close perspective, but also to stand back and get this large soundscape of a particular sonic environment. These are two of my favorite instruments at the moment. These are hydrophones, which are basically underwater microphones. But they also work in substrates such as sand, and they record the vibrations transmitted from the ocean up through the sand and into these instruments. But they also work beautifully underwater. And you hear this astonishing range of the water movements and the ebb and flow of currents and the sound of seawater across shingle and sand. It really is a, a beautiful environment, hostile to us, but fantastically rewarding from the sonic point of view. You just cannot imagine what it's going to be like. It's a place where we're never going to be. Our ears are never going to be um, under the sand or under the water because it's such a hostile place. We just wouldn't survive for long. But it's also an amazing place for sound. Sound travels so much more efficiently and faster in seawater. And sound travels in a very different way through the substrate, in this case through sand, to these beautiful, wow, these beautiful vibrations and also I can hear the pockets of air being released and bubbling up next to these hydrophones. It's fantastic. I've not heard this before. It takes us back to something that maybe we're familiar with, prenatal, because we're here, we start to hear at 24 weeks while we're still in our mother's womb. And to me, this harks back to those sort of embryonic sounds that we're surrounded by before we're born. And I think it's maybe one reason why we find the sounds of the sea and that rhythm, that ebb and flow, and that very rich harmonic content that Sea Wash has is so satisfying and tranquil. And all the time is that low, deep note of the sea, the sound basically of the North Sea, and it's like a signature sound. Every sea, every ocean has its individual signature sound. It's one of the things I've noticed I've been going around in different places and recording in different parts of the world. No two oceans or seas sound the same. They all have these characteristic signatures or elements to, to the component parts of the sound. Listening in a positive way, that is actively taking the decision to focus on certain things and re reject others, is 
is a very positive and creative thing to do in that it, for me anyway, individually, it actually stimulates my thought process. It makes me think perhaps more laterally about problem solving or um, how I can achieve a creative output for something. It makes me think in a different way. That's why I find it so satisfying. One thing I really like doing is, is recording the sounds of a place in transition. So down here from where the land and the beach start to merge in this wonderful low, rough grassland and thorn scrub. But it's a place that you can walk through every day and not hear much until you get down in amongst this, this mini jungle, this micro world. And it's fantastic to be able to drop the microphones in and just listen to what's happening down here. Sounds that are around our feet every day that you ignore, that you step through and walk over um, and just don't have a chance to, to listen to properly. And it's a great technique, again, using the microphones in a very close perspective, but getting them into this environment. The other important thing for me as well, I've discovered, is using, there's two microphones in here, using it as a two-channel stereo, because then that enables you really to, to start to hear that sense of space. Now. The whole world changes when you're down in here. So you can hear these sort of eddies, these high frequency notes of just the breeze catching the stems of this marram grass and whistling through these thorn leaves. It's got a real voice, it's got a real voice to it. And occasionally I can pick up bursts of song from grasshoppers in this dry grass. By invading that small space with the microphones, you spook a lot of things around around the mics, so you just have to sit back and wait for things to settle down once you've created that initial disturbance. But it's really worthwhile, that's really valuable creative time because it enables you to stop and listen to that F-16 at 20,000 feet. There's a whole world down there that we never really get the chance of listening to. I always think sounds like this have this really beautiful, it's a musical quality. It, it sounds like music to my ears. It's, there's this low moaning, almost vocal sound of the, of the wind blowing through the undergrowth. So it produces, it's like a chord. The problem is I find it very difficult to switch off. I can't turn my ears off. Um, so. I do get frustrated in some places where I have conflicting information or a very bad sonic environment. Or watching a bad a film with a bad soundtrack and, you know, I find it unforgivable, you know, and that's quite hard sometimes, that act of turning off. I've turned, you know, myself onto it, if you like, but it's actually quite difficult now. I think maybe that's because I feel driven by it, you know. It's important to me uh, and it makes up so much of my life, you know, and, and I love involving myself in it, whether it's just hearing somebody speak or the laughter of my children or the sound of rain on a tin roof or the sound of a hyena biting through the leg of a zebra. It's, you know, I can't help but feel absorbed by those sounds. What I like to do, even if I don't have any recording equipment, is go out somewhere, stand there and listen because our world is far more interesting and intriguing and fascinating sonically when you can stand and absorb and listen to sound or music. I don't discriminate between the two because the world is a far more interesting place when you can tune in and do that. <laughs>